I'm Sal Greco, and you're watching and listening to the Sal Greco Show. And we're just going to get right into it. There's a, a few things that are circulating in the news in particular that I'd like to uh, touch up on here. Uh, first off, there's this article in regards to congestion pricing in New York City and the wonderful state of New York with the aforementioned Governor Kathy Hochul, who, I mean, let me tell you something. Kathy Hochul ran an election today for governor. I don't know if she'll actually win, okay? Her stock has dropped dramatically in the last, I'd say, year. And this this is unbelievable what I'm about to show you and read to you. So here it is. Hochul says congestion pricing to start January 5th before Trump takes office. The tolling scheme is back on track with lower price point and governor. And the governor says she's, quote, looking for support from the federal government to support our shared goals of making this a world class system, end quote. So this is by Jose Martinez of The City, which is like one of my favorite outlets. Five months after suspending the vehicle tolling initiative aimed at funding transit upgrades, Governor Kathy Hochul put congestion pricing back on track Thursday and squarely in the sights of President-elect Donald Trump. At a Midtown News conference, as packed as a rush hour train, Hochul announced that motorists driving south of 60th Street in Manhattan will begin paying a once-daily $9 toll on January 5th. The tolls would kick in just over two weeks before the White House return of Trump, who has vowed to terminate congestion pricing in my first week back in office. The governor's latest reversal on the first in the nation plan came after Hochul in June put an indefinite pause on congestion pricing, which would have originally charged motorists $15. At the time, the move was labeled politically motivated, but Hochul on Thursday also denied that her decision to revive the plan now was driven by the results of the presidential election. Quote, a pause is a pause is a pause, end quote. Hochul said in a response to a question from the city about the five-month delay. Quote, people thought it was a permanent death. I said all along it was not permanent death. End quote. Hochul had vowed, vowed, Hochul had vowed since August to come up with an end-of-year alternative for the $15 tolling pan, which was designed to cut congestion and fund billions of dollars in upgrades to the MTA sprawling transportation network. She announced one Thursday, five months after the June pause, left a $16.5 billion hole in the MTA's five-year capital plan led to lawsuits from transit and environmental advocates and threats from Trump, who on Thursday told the New York Post that congestion pricing is, quote, the most regressive tax known to womankind. It will be virtually impossible for New York City to come back as long as the congestion tax is in effect, end quote, Trump said. The day after Trump defeated Vice President Kamala Harris, the city reported that transit and environmental advocates who backed congestion pricing warned that it was, quote, now or never, end quote, for the vehicle tolling initiative to be implemented in short order before the Republican administration returns. Quote, once it's turned on, it becomes very difficult to turn off, end quote. Julie Tighe, president of the New York League of Conservation Voters, told the city on Thursday. Hochul and her state budget director, Blake Washington, insisted the tolling scheme would still bring in $15 billion despite the 40% reduction in fees set to be slapped on motorists. When repeatedly pressed as to how that was possible, Director of State Operations Catherine Garcia summed it up as a condition of the 2019 state law that approved congestion pricing. Quote, we are required to give the MTA basically a $15 billion credit card. End quote, Garcia said. Quote, it just may mean that it takes longer to pay it all back, end quote. The governor also noted that while the $15 tolling plan predicted a 15 to 17% drop in traffic, the $9 plan only expects a 13% reduction in vehicles through the zone, meaning more cars would be paying. Missing money. The pause had forced the MTA to recalibrate its more than $50 billion 2020 to 2024 capital program. It put on hold plans that include installing ele elevators at 23 subway and Staten Island railway stations, buying a 250 plus electric buses and bus depot charging equipment and initiative to detect trespassing on train tracks. It also disrupted plans to put money towards so-called environmental justice communities disproportionately affected by vehicle emissions. Quote, over $100 million will be spent funding 
reducing polluting trucks that travel our streets, especially in the Bronx, said Deputy Mayor Miera Josi. And it also buys that borough additional green space in an asthma center, end quote. Hochul said those projects are now a go while conceding. They may take a little longer to complete. Quote, it took some time to navigate the right financial structuring so we could get to the money so no project is jeopardized, Hogel said. Then we can start. Turn on the switch right away to start these critical projects that I believe in, end quote. Jano Lieber, MTA chairperson and CEO, said Hochul's support of congestion pricing is essential for projects that had temporarily been put on ice, signing the extension of the 2nd Avenue subway from 96th Street to Harlem. Quote, we will be putting out the request for proposals for the tunnel boring on the 2nd Avenue subway promptly as a result of the actions taken by the governor today, end quote, he said. Hochul also pledged her strong support for the transit agency's next five-year capital plan. At $68.4 billion, it's the largest in the history of the MTA, but also one that faces a projected $33 billion funding gap of its own. Budget watch- Watchdog said the governor needs to provide the public with more details and assurances that the funding shortfalls in both capital plans will be filled. Quote, the capital plan's financing should be sustainable, not setting the stage for new tax increases every five years and fairly apportion the cost across the region and among riders, drivers, and taxpayers, end quote. The nonprofit Citizens Budget Commission said in a statement, Hochul's earlier shift away from congestion pricing also put into question a pledge to put money toward environmental justice efforts in neighborhoods disproportionately affected by poor air quality as a result of traffic. Those now had the green light. Quote, Lower income communities will not only benefit from improved public transit service, but also cleaner air, said Hochul, adding that she has directed the MTA to provide more frequent bus service along at least 23 bus routes outside of Manhattan. For all the hopeful words that accompany Thursday's announcement, officials acknowledge the potential for congestion pricing clash with Trump while expressing hope that the president-elect may pull a U-turn of his own on the vehicle tolling plan. Quote, I am looking for support from the federal government to support our shared goals of making this a world-class system, Hochul said. So I will have those conversations and ask all my federal partners from the president to Congress on down. Well, there you have it. So this congestion pricing, which was taken out temporarily, temporarily by Kathy Hochul because there was an election coming. And we know that congestion pricing would have been technically on the ballot if they would have been implemented back in June where it was $15. So now it's only $9. So Kathy Hochul's taking a victory lap saying, well, uh, it was $15 and I made it $9. Actually, Kathy, it's $0 right now. This is going to be challenged by everybody. It's being challenged by the half in the bag governor of New Jersey, Phil Murphy. So, I mean, look, you're basically penalizing the constituents of New York City and the neighbors, like in New Jersey and Connecticut. This should not stand. I don't care how much money you think you're going to make on this. Uh, there has to be another way. And I'm sure everybody could come together on this. But unfortunately, I will go back and remind everybody it was passed into law in 2019 by who? The former governor of New York State, Andrew Cuomo. What can I say? That guy just leaves a lasting legacy, doesn't he? But this should not happen. $9. I mean, God knows it's going to, people will be complaining about this. So we'll see where this leads to. And of course, I, I really hope that the federal government does step in and could kill this whole program because look, people, if, if this would have been on the ballot, meaning Kathy Hogan would have proceeded with this way back in June, I'm sure more of her fellow Democrats would not be in Congress or in the state Senate or in the state assembly right now had that still been on the board the way it was supposed to be. So now we're going to go, we're going to transition it to something else. It looks like the NYPD chief of patrol, John Shell, he cannot stop going on Newsmax. I think Newsmax, just give this guy a job because he finds a way on Newsmax. I've never seen anything like this. 
where the upper echelon of the NYPD loves to be in front of cameras. They're in front of the cameras, actually, more than they might be in the street trying to affect public safety. So let's just hear what the illustrious chief of patrol, John Shell, has to say. John Shell is on Newsmax so much, they should just give him a job. So let's play this clip and uh, show you the article. Chief, I wanted to ask you about, uh, you know, talking about the, the Trump family. It's reported that Baron Trump, he's going to be attending NYU. Um, Melania Trump will live here partially as well. We talked about securing the, the, the buildings and obviously Secret Service would be a big part of this, too. But is that taken into account as well? Not just the building secure, but obviously the, the comings and goings of the Trump family. Absolutely. Those adjustments we made based on scheduling and what his family's coming and going. There's other properties around town that we, 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 we monitor, but we did it in 2016. We've done it before. What about NYU though? How does that work? Baron attending college? That's NYU. not, I, I almost got into NYU, but then they saw my SAT scores and went south on me. Oh, so, that, that, well, we, we, <laughs> we secure all the facilities. Yeah. It's, you know, it's a great city. NYPD chief shell to Newsmax. Mayor will decide how to handle migrants under Trump. This is by Charlie McCarthy. The New York Police Department will take its lead regarding President-elect Donald Trump's expected mass deportation of illegal immigrants from the mayor and city officials, NYPD Chief of Patrol John Shell told Newsmax on Friday. Trump, who will, re who will return to office on January 20th, has named former acting U.S. Immigration and Customs Enforcement Director Tom Homan to serve as border czar in his incoming administration. Homan is expected to enforce Trump's campaign pledge to launch the largest deportation operation in the country's history. During an appearance on National Report, Shell was asked whether the NYPD would support a mass deportation of illegal immigrants. Quote, right now on our sanctuary city laws, we have to follow the law. We don't work with the federal government with deportation. We work with just keeping the city safe. End quote. Shell told co-host Sean Craftsman and Emma Reichenberg. Quote, if changes are made, that process will take its place and we'll get our direction from our mayor and our city hall as to how we're going to approach that. End quote. New York City Democrat Mayor Eric Adams last week vowed to work with Trump to address the migrant crisis while stressing the city will remain a sanctuary city. Quote, we've taken on about 225,000 migrants since April of 2022. And let's be clear. There's a small minority of them that are committing crimes in the city, Shell said. At the end of the day, we don't care about your status as a police department. We're just going after the people that hurt our city. And as far as the mayor and what he's going to do, I leave that to him and his team. What we do here is just trying to keep this the safest city in America, end quote. With Trump preparing to serve another four years as the country's chief executive, Shell said some security changes will be made in the city, especially around Trump Tower in Midtown Manhattan. Quote, we did this in 2016. Shell said of the year Trump won his first term as president. I've already been at Trump Towers during the assassination attempt. How we can make it safer for him and his family with the Secret Service. I've heard all partners. And now, of course, he won the election. So we have an apparatus there. We're going to take a look at it. What can we do better? What do we need to do? End quote. Craftsman asked where the NYPD security measures take into account that incoming First Lady Melania Trump is expected to live part-time in the city and son Baron Trump is reportedly attending NYU. Quote, absolutely, he said. Those adjustments will be made based on scheduling and what his family is coming and going. There's other properties around town that we monitor, but we did it in 2016. We've done it before, end quote. So there you have it. I mean, you're listening to John Shell, who is so self-impressed of, you know, it's just, and this is embarrassing. Look, the NYPD in 2016, when President Trump was the president, I was working in the NYPD. They always had Trump Tower secure. They always communicate with Secret Service. I don't know why John Shell has the need to go on television to announce this, but the Secret Service has that under control. When you're the current president, it's not like when you're the former president. So they will have maximum security. And yes, the NYPD had their own unit there, which were people from at that time SRG, 
I guess now it's the CRT team. Whatever it's going to be, there will be people stationed there. I have no doubt that they will keep President Trump's family secure. But, of course, this is just another opportunity for John Shell to go on television because maybe he has a political future. Who knows? Uh, but, uh, again, this guy is another Eric Adams. He can't stop finding a camera. And, by the way, him saying that Eric Adams has the final say over whether they're going to cooperate with ICE or not, all Eric Adams has to do is rescind that executive order from many years ago that says that the NYPD cannot call ICE and tell them that they have these detainer warrants from central booking. It's all it takes. It's very simple. So he's right, but also he's not right because ICE could do actually what they want if they want to wait outside the courthouse, if they want to go inside and see who's in the cells. Remember, ICE can enforce immigration laws anywhere they want. They could e actually walk down the street if they wanted to. So I don't know what he's getting at other than this guy can't stop being in front of a camera. It's pretty pathetic, actually. So now I want to transition into the next thing. And there's a lot of chatter about this one. So as you know, with President Trump's election, there's going to be new people appointed everywhere. That's from the, the, the Department of Justice, as far as Attorney General goes, the deputies, and also the head of the Southern District of New York. Also the Eastern District of New York. I expect all new personnel to be appointed. So now people are upset that Damian Williams, the current head of the SDNY, the U.S. attorney for the SDNY right now, is going to be pushed out. Or technically, he's going to be terminated from the job because there'll be a new head. But this is nothing that is out of the unusual as far as when a new president is elected and comes in. So let me read this off to you from the Daily News. You could... Uh, Hear it and look at it for yourselves. Trump seeks to oust U.S. Attorney Damian Williams. This is from the Daily News from Molly Crane Newman and also the Batman of the New York City press corps beat Chris Sommerfeld. President-elect Donald Trump on Thursday said that he wants to replace Damian Williams, U.S. Attorney for the Southern District of New York, with Jay Clayton, his former chairman of the Securities and Exchange Commission. The proposed change, which Trump announced in a Truth Social post, comes as Williams is overseeing several high prosecutions, including the public corruption case against Mayor Adams, the sex trafficking case against Sean Diddy Combs, and the campaign finance case against former Lieutenant Governor Brian Benjamin. Quote, Jay is a highly respected business leader, counsel, and public servant. End quote. Trump wrote of his former SEC chairman from 2017 to 2020, now a senior advisor and attorney at high-powered Manhattan law firm Sullivan and Cromwell. Quote, Jay is going to be a strong fighter for the truth. End quote. A spokesman for Williams declined to comment or indicate whether he would step down before Trump takes office. Under Williams' leadership, the SDNY, historically known for handling complex white-collar cases, has secured the high-profile convictions of fallen crypto mogul Sam Bankman-Fried, investor, and Archeos Capital founder Bill Hoang, and exiled Chinese tycoon and Steve Bannon associate Miles Guo. Williams has also aggressively prioritized going after public corruption, winning a conviction early this year against New Jersey Democratic Senator Bob Menendez. His departure will come as SDNY is pursuing the high-profile bribery and corruption case against Mayor Adams and a series of other probes connected to City Hall. It was not immediately clear how Williams' departure might affect Adams' case, though Trump has said he believes the mayor was unfairly targeted. Quote, we were persecuted, Eric, end quote. Trump said to Adams during the recent Al Smith charity dinner, you're going to win, Eric, end quote. Adams, who has pled not guilty to the charge against him, came under fire from fellow Democrats in the run-up to the election for comments about Trump that were seen as out of step with the party's position. As for the mayor's reaction to the Clinton pick, his spokeswoman, Kayla Mamalak, said, Quote, as Mayor Adams has said, every elected leader has a right to nominate and appoint the people they see best fit to serve. President-elect Trump is no different, end quote. President Biden nominated Williams in 2021, making him the first black American to lead the powerful prosecutor's office. And at 41, one of the youngest to hold the position, at, had vice 
President Kamala Harris won the presidency. He was believed to be in the running for a top appointment. Clayton, 58, a longtime corporate attorney before Trump tapped him to lead the SEC and a board member of Apollo Global Management, one of the world's largest asset management firms, has no experience with criminal prosecutions. Trump tried to tap Clayton as head of the SDNY without success in 2020 after former Attorney General Bill Barr unceremoniously tried to force out U.S. Attorney Jeffrey Berman. That resulted in a dramatic showdown when Berman, at the time investigating several allies of the president, including Rudy Giuliani, refused to resign, objecting to Clayton's nomination because he had no prosecutorial experience. Berman was then dismissed by Trump and agreed to leave the post when it was decided that his deputy, Audrey Strauss, would take over in an acting capacity. If Clayton makes it through the Senate confirmation process, it remains to be seen whether he will see William's war on public corruption through to its conclusion and whether the SDNY will retain its quote, sovereign district, end quote, moniker for its renowned independence from Maine justice in Washington, D.C. Trump, who has vowed to seek retribution against his perceived enemies, appears to be following through on his stated goal to, quote, completely overhaul, end quote, the DOJ, which brought two indictments against him after his first term by filling it with loyalists. His pick for Attorney General, Florida Congressman and staunch ally Matt Gates set shockwaves through the DOJ on Wednesday, and after announcing Clayton as his SDNY pick on Thursday, Trump said, he would tap the lead attorneys who repped him in his Manhattan hush money case, Todd Blanche and ML Bove, as deputy attorney general and principal associate deputy attorney general, respectively. And his memoir, Holding the Line Inside the Nation's Permanent U.S. Attorney's Office and His Battle with the Trump Justice Department. Berman wrote about Trump weaponizing his DOJ in a directive he received to, quote, even things out, end quote. After the SDNY prosecuted Trump's longtime former fixer, Michael Cohen, quote, Trump's Justice Department kept demanding that I use my office to aid them politically, and I kept declining in ways just tactful enough to keep me from being fired, end quote, Berman wrote. Quote, I walked this tightrope for two and a half years. Eventually, the rope snapped, end quote. Because there's this major corruption case with eric adams and then there's also this you know i don't know what you want to call it with p diddy but this seems to be like another jeffrey epstein case but with p diddy and eric adams in particular two major cases people seem to be under this false impression that because damien williams is leaving these cases will now be dismissed or or, or president trump's going to pardon these guys listen this is pure speculation. This has happened every four years, sometimes eight, depending on who's the president and who's uh, appointed into these positions. But the show goes on. I could tell you this because I was a cop. Just because different people get elected, it doesn't mean that the actual institution will now completely change from top to bottom. The attorneys that still have these cases are still going to prosecute them. So, I, you know, I don't know what to say with that. I am a, a fan of Damian Williams, even though you could call me a quote unquote Republican or conservative. I think he did a great job and never showing that he was biased. He's very impartial and played things down the middle as a U.S. attorney uh, should be and shall be doing. So with that being said, I wish the new head of the SDNY when he does get confirmed Jay Clayton good luck I'm sure he's going to do a good job too because it's really up to the people underneath them to actually make the office move forward and be successful and now I want to transition to the next thing since we brought his name up once again and that's Mayor Eric Adams indicted New York City Mayor Eric Adams not only is he indicted not only is he under four corruption probes not only is everyone around him that worked underneath them all being investigated and questioned and doing proffers right now, still ongoing, by the way. But the appearance of impropriety, it just never leaves him. I don't know if this guy wakes up on the wrong side of bed every day, but the appearance of impropriety is a staple of Eric Adams, his political career, his police career. And here it is yet again. So let me show you this and read this off to you. NYC agency moved annual event to Ritzy Club co-owned by Mayor Adams donors. 
This is from the Daily News, written by the Batman of the New York City Press Corps, Chris Sommerfeld. A members-only social club in Manhattan co-owned by prominent political donors to Mayor Adams was selected to host a city government event this month where the mayor delivered remarks about making New York the world's, quote, most business-friendly, end quote, city, the Daily News has learned. The event, an annual, an annual procurement fair held by Adams Small Business Services Department, took place November 4th at Casa Cipriani, a club the mayor and several of his top advisors have been known to patronize. Adams has also hosted campaign fundraisers at the club, which is housed in a Battery Maritime building overlooking the Statue of Liberty. A small business services spokeswoman said her agency paid Casa Cipriani $31,883 for the fair. Most of that sum, $20,927, covered technical assistance the club provided, including security, while the rest, $10,956, covered beverages and pastries, she said. The tab is about 9000 higher than previous SBS procurement fairs. The annual fair was held at Brooklyn's Barclays Center in 2022 and 2023, and SBS paid that venue about $22,000 for each event, the agency rep said. The rep said the Barclays tabs were lower because that venue didn't charge for technical assistance. This month's fair marked the first time SBS has held an event at Casa Cipriani. There are no rules restricting city agencies from holding events at venues owned by the mayor's political supporters, but John Kahini, executive director of the the Rhinevent Albany Government Watch Group said Adams' administration should be more mindful of appearances given the mayor's bribery indictment and several separate corruption investigations into members of his inner circle. Quote, the city should seek to avoid using venues owned by big contributors because it undermines public trust in government. End quote. He said, quote, that's especially important right now when the mayor is under so much scrutiny. End quote. The SBS spokeswoman confirmed there was no competitive bidding before agency picked Casa Cipriani. She didn't say who made the call to throw this year's fair at Casa Cipriani, but told the news the venue was selected, quote, based on the size, location, incidental cost, and availability, end quote. Casa Cipriani didn't respond to emailed questions. Casa Cipriani is co-owned by Midtown Equities, one of the city's largest real estate firms, which is operated by the politically powerful Kari. I hope I said that right, family, or Kyrie. The Kyries have a track record of donating to Adam's political and legal initiatives. In December 2023, Michael Kyrie, who helps run Midtown Equities and is the son of firm founder Joseph Kyrie, gave $5,000, the legal max to Adam's Legal Defense Trust, which he launched to cover lawyer fees he racked up in the corruption case in which he has pled not guilty. Also in December, Trina and Sarah Kyrie, wives of Joseph Kyrie and his brother Jack Kyrie, each gave Adams Trust $5,000, but the fund returned those contributions after news outlet Hellgate reported they were legally barred from donating to it as their husbands are in the cities doing business database in their capacities as Midtown Equities executives. Though Michael Kyrie helps run Midtown Equities, he's not listed in the database allowing him to give to the trust. The Kyries, including Michael Joseph, Jack, and their wives, have given another $16,920 to Adams' 2021 and 2025 campaigns. Contributions that unlocked at least an additional $13,400 in public matching funds, records show. At the event, Adams, whose indictment alleges he took bribes from Turkish government operatives and others in exchange for political favors, told business owners in attendance they shouldn't, quote, believe the bullshit, end quote being reported about him because he's, quote, kicking ass and people need to recognize what we are doing, end quote. Pivoting to financial issues, he said his administration is focused on generating private business in the city, including in the real estate sector. Quote, this needs to become the most business-friendly city and state on the globe. That's the goal, end quote, he said. All right, what else can I say that I haven't said already about Mayor? Eric Adams, the first indicted mayor in the history of New York City. This guy, I mean, he has a lot to say, too, there. He says everything is BS. (laughs) We'll see about that one, Eric. We'll see if everything is BS. I've never seen a guy like this. He's basically thumbing his nose to the law because he thinks he is the law. All right? That's the reality. What you heard 
And what I read in that article, that's the real Eric Adams. That's who he really is. He thinks he's above it all. You're seeing what many of us that worked in the police department already knew about this guy. Congratulations. So with that being said, I'm going to end the show by playing my interview on Sid Rosenberg's show on Sid and Friends in the Morning on WABC Radio. And uh, listen, Sid, you could call him a detractive Eric Adams, but you know what he is? He's a concerned citizen of New York City who pays taxes like every other taxpayer in New York City. And they're very concerned over what's going on with Eric Adams and his administration and everything else in New York City because it's a mess. It's still a mess. Okay, so I'm going to play this for you. I'm going to end it on on that note. So if you like what you saw, if you like what you heard, if you're on YouTube, hit that like button, hit that share button, hit the subscribe button, hit the notification button. If you're on Rumble, hit the follow button, hit the Rumble button. If you're listening in on any major podcast streaming platforms, give it a like and subscribe. And uh, I'm going to continue to come to you with facts. I mean, these things are very troubling. I, I I don't suspect anybody pardoning anybody. This is like crazy talk right now uh, of hearing about pardon and commutate. All these rumors right now in April, there will be a trial of Eric Adams, who, by the way, isn't he in a sexual assault lawsuit that the city is illegally representing him in right now still? And you heard John Shell before. He's also in a sexual misconduct case. So two guys in sexual misconduct cases that are still proceeding forward that somehow the taxpayers are paying for are being, I mean, they're trying to make them relevant when they shouldn't be. They should be asked exactly what's going on. Very self-impressed people that never want to be held accountable for anything. John Shell and Eric Adams. It's unbelievable. So that being said, I'm let me play you this interview, and I'm going to tell you this. Have a great weekend, and I'll see you all soon. Good morning, good afternoon, and good night. Sal Greco, Sal Greco spent 14 years, NYPD. He's got the Sal Greco Show. He's at the Sal Greco on X. He's best buddies with Roger Stone, good buddies with Curtis Sliwa, and I like Sal. Uh, Sal has not been treated well by the NYPD. We'll get into that. And uh, he basically, not basically, he does tweet and Instagram and all these things every day about the mayor, about the NYPD, about the city, and he's right a lot. He's like Curtis. He's right a lot. And he's saying some um, pretty rough stuff about the mayor. Look, here's what I see. The mayor and Trump have a good relationship. That's not a joke. I don't know why, but Donald Trump likes the mayor. He does. He likes them. I know it goes back to the DOJ. They've got that kindred spirit. We were both targeted. I may disagree. Sal may disagree. Curtis may disagree. It doesn't matter. Trump believes that he and Adams were both targeted, and he likes them. I've even heard people, and I've got some friends, tell me that Adams may end up getting a job in the Trump administration. So... Sal Greco says to me yesterday, <laughs> listen to me, he ain't getting pardoned. He ain't getting nothing. He may be going to jail. So with that said, uh, here he is, Sal Greco. Sal, before we get into Adams, you need to uh, update me and the listeners on how your case is going. Because there are some that say, listen, Sal's got a hard on for the mayor. He's got a hard on for the cops. That's where a lot of his talk comes from. I'm not saying that's the case. I don't think it's the case. But where are you right now in your own case with New York City? Oh, thanks. Thanks, Sid, for that wonderful intro. Uh, it's, it's an honor. Thank you. Uh, so, yes, uh, uh, I understand people say, you know, you have to understand, though, if you do have an axe to grind, doesn't mean that you're not wrong. So in two weeks, we're going to have depositions finally after, what's it been, over two years. And I'm going to have Keyshawn Sewell. Uh, in a deposition, and she'll have to answer for what exactly occurred in my case, along with some other people, like this uh, Sergeant Orenstein that uh, used uh, illegal subpoenas and said I was on narcotics and then said I, I never used narcotics. 
He's going to have to answer for all this. Well, stuff. before you go any further, first of all, I love Keyshawn too. I don't like the fact uh, that she may have messed with you because I love you too, but I do love her. What are you alleging exactly? Well, well my termination was basically it was political. And uh, we need to know exactly what are the procedures or how this all went about. Well, you say your termination was political. Your best buddies with Roger Stone. Everybody knows that Stone and Trump are best buddies. Like Donald Trump, his place in Mar-a-Lago, Stone's house in Fort Lauderdale was raided by the FBI. So when you say politically motivated, are you saying the NYPD and the city held it against you that you're friends with Stone and Trump? Correct. That was the, the whole basis of it. And it's funny how it's Eric Adams as the mayor who terminated me for being a Trump supporter and now is begging for a pardon behind the scenes, despite the fact that he's probably the single most corrupt man to be in politics today, short of Joe Biden, who's the president right now and on the way out. See, everybody I talk to, even people that are Adams detractors, I think it's fair to say, Sal, at this point, I'm an Adams detractor. I think he's done a terrible job. But I don't find a lot of people, to be honest, that think he broke the law. In fact, they keep saying, I'm not sure they've got anything on this guy. So why are you so cocksure, so convinced that he's going down? Because a lot of people that don't even like him say, honestly, there's nothing there. Well, right here in the last couple of days, there was an article written by uh, L.A. Mag, which is, you know, it's an offshoot uh, uh, website, actually. But they, they actually reported something, and then the Daily News picked up on it also here in New York, is that there's a Turkish billionaire, Sezgan Varan Korkmaz, who's he's a CIA asset. He was a friend of a, a CIA director, Woolsey, who was, he was actually given a speech at the U.N. in 2017 but he's caught up in a money laundering case in Utah, and he just so happens to be how they have they have identified him as a businessman number three in Eric Adams' indictment, where he offered fifty thousand dollars to uh, you know become uh, good friends with Eric and put in his campaign because the Turks, as you know, believe that he was going to become the next uh, president of the United States at a certain point. So in this entire scheme. This guy is not only a witness, but, Sid, after, after Eric gets indicted, somehow they show up together, which that shouldn't even happen. They were out together at a food uh, giveaway in New York City just last month. And that is already drawing enough eyebrows saying, wait a minute, isn't he on a list of defendants that Eric shouldn't even be involved with or talking to? See, that's the problem with this guy, Sid. He's a... He, he's a he's a highly conflicted individual who surrounds himself with corruptible people. So if we were to say you pardon this guy or give this guy a commutation, that you know the president's allowed to do what he wants. The problem is that Eric is involved in so many things and his tentacles go everywhere, including his administration, the people that resign. There's still a litany. There's a, still a mess of things to come that you're going to hear about, and Eric's involved in all that. So how do you? Just turn a blind eye and say, okay, well, corruption's great. Well, but, but I, I don't think anybody's turning a blind eye. What they're saying is all you've got is, you know, he made room for the embassy for Turkey in a building in New York City. Uh, they upgraded his seats on a flight. Trump says they do that for me all the time. So all this other stuff that you've been talking about, that Curtis has been talking about, money from China, money from all these places, that's not on the table right now. I mean, it may be on the table uh, from the federal government, but no one's talking about that. All they're saying is, wait a second, he got upgraded his flights and he, he made space for a building for Turkey in the city? That's what everybody else is saying outside of Sal Greco, Curtis Sliwa, and the FBI. That's the issue. And Trump is like, I haven't seen him do anything wrong. Upgrading yeah. your seats, what are you, nuts? I did that my whole life. Somebody, somebody needs to actually show me the indictment and actually read the part. Well, that well, 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 why don't you tell me, because, again, I tend to believe you guys. So you tell me, what does the indictment say? What exactly did Eric Adams do? What are the laws that you think Eric Adams broke? What happened is, is he took matching funds from the city, meaning for every $250 you raise, you get an eight-to-one matching fund. From the city, the taxpayers, people, you, you in New York City said you paid into his campaign through these matching funds, which came 
from a foreign entity, which is Turkey, and it amounted to $10 million. He took $10 million of your money, New York City taxpayer money, in his campaign. This is what everybody keeps just glossing over. That in itself is the major crime. If at anything else, just for that alone, he will see something, whether it's jail time. It's not just going to be he has to give the money back because he used it. He used it and he took taxpayer money. That is the, the, the crime that he committed. That's the major crime that he committed. So you are convinced, along with people like Kevin Breslin, who sent me some stories. See, I don't care what the Daily News says because they hate the mayor, too. So um, you're convinced, like you said to me yesterday, ain't going to be no pardon, none of that, even though all signs point to a pardon, maybe a job, who knows what. You're convinced that's not happening for the mayor. No, so this would bring a lot. This, If you think the scrutiny that Eric Adams is under now, he gets pardoned. Or if President Trump has anything to do with him other than dealing with him as he's the mayor of New York City, so he has to talk to him just like I heard Tom Holman yesterday was great. He has Thank to you. deal with him also. That was great, by the way. That, he's letting you know that they have to deal with him as the head of the city, which amazingly he still is. But as far as having him entangled around you, as a member of your cabinet or anything, that's going to draw a lot of scrutiny, whether it's from the media, from uh, these fact checkers, the fact checkers out there, and, of course, the DOJ, because, yes, they don't, sit, they don't prosecute sitting presidents, but that doesn't mean they start another witch hunt on Eric, who still hangs around shady people. I mean, I wonder, hey, is he going to bring uh, – all his friends from Consa Frito with him to the White House. Does he still, I mean, really. Does, does, he still go there? does he still go there to that place? No, he doesn't, does he? he, he uh, well, that place is shuttered. Right. It's now in right. New place, Sobro right. Gardens. But, of course, the infamous Jimmy Rodriguez, the mob associate and friend of P. Diddy and, and friends, uh, he has this place in it. How they got it open, that's under scrutiny as well because it was uh, – yeah. Same kind of stuff as Consa Frita, how they right. got it. All, so you told, never it. you told me a couple of weeks ago after the election that um, you got a very good source who told you, and if I'm saying something wrong, just correct me, but you've got a good source who told you there will be more indictments coming the mayor's way, that we're going to see more serious indictments coming the mayor's way. Do you still stand by that? Yes, I actually, uh, uh, there was another source that actually messaged, you know, told me again, He's hearing it again. It's a strong, it's a strong rumor, and that the indictment is coming. And it's not just Eric; it's others. Meaning, you know, there's an article in the city that shows that Eric had this, uh, I guess, a fundraiser, and it's it's actually on YouTube, and it's uh, in in this with the New World Mall. The uh, the head of that, he's a he's a Chinese uh, billionaire, I guess, and. This guy gave maximum contributions. The problem is there was 231 people that donated, and anything over $500 as a, as a dinner must be re- reported to the campaign finance board. It never was, Sid. And as they already contacted people that donated money who said, what are you talking about? We never gave a dime to Eric Adams. Who Somebody gave money under my name. And herein lies the problem. So on the final 60 seconds, Sal Greco, by the way, former cop Marty Feeney, who I love dearly, he owns Adrian's Restaurant in Broad Channel. He checks in. He read your indictment. He thinks it's nonsense. He's on your side. So um, in the final 60 seconds, whether or not he goes to jail, gets pardoned, let's talk about his political career. Last I checked, his approval rating was under 30 percent, and he actually went to the judge and said, hey, can you move my trial date so I can make sure I can concentrate on campaigning for my next run. Is Eric Adams deluding himself? 28% doesn't sound like he's a legitimate candidate a second time around. Now, so he, you know, as of right now, I'd say his political career is finished. If there's another indictment, it's clearly finished. But if somehow he gets saved, which would be, you know, that would be like astronomically to think that. But if he does get saved, there's always a chance that because, like Curtis said, his complexion is protection, and he'll just say he was a victim like he's been saying for 35 years. Well, what happens then, you're right. So if he decides to change parties, don't forget, he was a Republican when he was a senator. Now he's got Trump, a Republican, saving his ass. So maybe he leaves the Democrat Party, runs as a Republican. Now he primaries Curtis Sliwa. 
the Sliwa beat Adams. Adams beat Sliwa pretty handily when they ran for mayor. If it's Adams versus Sliwa in the primary, does Curtis beat him this time around? Curtis would have a, a strong chance of beating him, but again, with the city politics, and we know how that works. You know, Eric, with all that money he has behind him, with the way he races money, he might be able to buy his way through that, and that would be very unfortunate. I really hope that that doesn't happen because Curtis is, he should be the Republican candidate, but it seems like the party in New York City doesn't have the same feeling that uh, Curtis does. So Gunty, I like him, and I want him. So. Oh, so, Gunty, ahead, you say that, give me what happens with Eric Adams. Personally, politically, next 30 seconds, Gunty, ahead, what happens to Eric Adams? Uh, Eric uh, would be in, should be indicted for something, whatever is coming, a secondary indictment, a superseding indictment, and then he will be on trial in April, no matter what. Whether Trump puts a new head of the SDNY in, he will still have to face that trial. And, and then in there, you'll be hearing about other stuff or what was really going on during this whole period. All right, fair enough, Sal Greco. Follow Sal. He's a great follow. Trust me, I do. On Twitter, at the Sal Greco. He's got the Sal Greco Show. Him and Roger Stone do a great job. Sal, as always, thank you for hopping on this morning. Good work, buddy. Thank you so much. Sid, I love you. And too bad I didn't see you in election night because the convention center was popping. It really needed you. No, it didn't need me. You had 90,000 of you guys down there. Everybody went down to Florida, but you had a good time. It was fun. Oh, uh, Sid, it was, it was fantastic. It was quite a, quite a run after yeah. four years ago. You know what happened with me yeah. and Roger and to see that. It was yeah. so great. It just would have been nice to see you because you did so much, well, you know, thank with you. your show. Put Trump over the top. That's how I see it. You know, uh, thank you. Great. Thank you. I need more Hopefully. people to, I need more people to tell Trump that. I'll, uh, I'll be down, uh, the week of, uh, Christmas. I'll be at Mar-a-Lago one of those nights. I'll reach out to you. We'll see you then. Great job. Thank you so much, Sal. Thank you. Thank you, Sid. God bless. God bless you, too. That's my man Sal Greco right there, and he got screwed by the NYPD. There's no question in my mind he got screwed, and they need to fix that, Sal Greco. 